now, 525, I'd like to call this meeting of the Board of Trustees, the Library Board of Trustees to order. We are on Zoom. Uh, it's being recorded. And are there any additions or deletions from? Right. Are there any additions or deletions to the meeting by any of the board members? No. Yeah, you do. One more time. <laughs> Anybody oh, have anything? <laughs> do any of the board members have any additions or or deletions from today's agenda? No. Oh. Second. Agenda on the agenda. Did I say me? Who seconded that? Me. Oh, yeah. okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do any of the board members have conflicts or potential conflicts of interest? No. Oh. No. Everybody? No. Okay. And uh, we don't have any announcements. Talk about. Okay. So, uh, oh, I'm supposed to say, remember there's a sign in sheet if you want to make comments, sign in, and you'll be given three minutes to say your piece. So, let's just move on to public comment. Okay, Sandy Turbo. I have a question um, from last uh, meeting. We were talking about something about a book challenge, and it wasn't going to be public. And I'd like to know what that is. The OBOB? Does that sound familiar, the OBOB book challenge? Maybe that's what it was. Okay. So I don't know a whole lot about OBOB. So I just know that it's not. The tournament is not going to be here in Kirk County. It's being held in Madras. What does it stand so for? What is it? I, the Oregon I mean, Battle of the Books. So okay, so that answers my question. Yeah, it's the kids read a select amount of books, and then they go, and then they they have teams, and then they ask questions about the books, and it's kind of a reading comprehension, little fun competition for the, all the grade levels. Okay. Thank you. Sean, do they have a list of the books online? Yeah. And is it on our library site? No, it's uh, through, I think it's through OBOP website. Okay. And are they the same all over Oregon, like for all the libraries? Mm -hmm. um, it's library schools. It's through, it's ran by the state. Okay, so the next speaker is Barbara Pugh. Okay. Okay, um, Rich Myers. Okay. Thank you. I haven't been back to a meeting since December, but I've been following with the weekly while very and what's been happening. And I would just like to say thank you, first of all, to the trustees that supported running the library for all people. And I'd like to thank the staff and what they're doing with out a leader in place i think they're doing a remarkable job and i just everybody keep remembering that it is for everyone it is for the public thank you and i'm not sure who the next person is Michael? No. is it michael Lester? Oh. <laughs> Um, it should be the first thing in line. Sorry. Um, this morning, I was watching the video completely unrelated to anything, and, and it actually featured uh, Desmond is amazing, but we all know who he is. The library has a couple books in the children's section. Um, and Desmond in this video was. Uh, Desmond was 
Desmond was sorry. Desmond was mimicking, snorting uh, something called ketamine off his arm, um, and that was kind of startling. But when I actually went and found the video itself, uh, he mentions that, but then he also mentions uh, pedophile predators. And so my question is, I realize you can't police Desmond, but do we want folks in the children's section? Or a, a kid on TV that's mimicking story drugs. Uh, he's 15 now, so I don't know what he's into, but I just I'm just asking for a review if maybe that's really a good idea or not. Yeah. And then what excuse me? Uh, the, in order to have something reviewed. We have what's called a collections policy, and if you want to challenge something, you need to fill out one of the forms called reconsideration. Okay, so this isn't something the board looks at. No. No, we have a collection development policy that um, the trustees approve the policy itself, and then um, the selectors follow that policy. Do you want to keep that for reference or so I can just say it? Want to keep this? He wants that are just a picture. I did some screenshots. Okay. Do you want to keep that or? Okay. Okay. And then we have Daniel Dunaway. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to say real quick that back in December, um, we saw this board make a, a big decision, and that decision was made after, you know comments from Crook County citizens, testimony from experts, and uh, the decision that was made was the right decision. And I uh, I guess all I really want to say is that moving forward, I, I hope that this board continues to do good work and continues to make um, the right decisions, decisions based on best available data, decisions based on what's right for our kids and community and uh, decisions based on um, welcoming and not exclusion. Okay, that was it. That's it, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item on the agenda is a consent agenda, which includes the minutes of the February meeting. Anybody have any comments on the meeting of February 9th? No? Second. We have a motion by Deborah and a second by Natalie. Do we have a vote, please? Those in favor? Opposed? None? Unanimously carried. Now we're into reports. Hey, we're just about on schedule still. Okay, first we have the Friends of the Library report. So, are you going to do it? Yeah. Okay, unless you like to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they had their meeting on February 15th, and they just kind of went over some of the activities that their members have gone through. Um, the treasurer's report was. Uh, indicative of the support that they're getting at this time from new members uh, they're donating a lot of dues and uh, they're also getting a lot of donations for uh, the prizes the gifts and everything that they've got going on for their december sale so basically their um, income for december was excuse me january 2037 so that was going really well. Um, under committee reports, chapters, bookstore, they do have somebody coming in on Fridays now. So they pretty much have a volunteer each day of the week. So that's been very helpful. For membership, they're now at 170 members. They sent out their forms for renewals. So hopefully everyone will have the opportunity to uh, renew their membership with the friends. They're also going to be setting up a membership table in the library lobby. And that is just to make sure that they can uh, kind of get their organization out there for the public that are coming by. With the book sorting, 
they've been having a lot of success with their third Saturday sales and their book donations are way down. So they're kind of concerned. They did a Facebook post asking for book donations. And I gotta tell you, they're getting a lot of books. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, which that is very good. Um, okay, so under publicity, Sean has been helping them advertise their book sales on the um, lobby TV display. He's also been posting on our website and on the library social media. And he's also sending out monthly emails from the library to the Roundup, the Central Oregonian in Cornerstone, highlighting the programs and outreach, including the um, Friends of the Library book sales. So I think that's kind of helping things too. They do have another book sale scheduled for March 18th. So hopefully everyone can swing by. They're doing the uh, $5 a bag. So that's, you can get quite a few books stuffed in a paper sack and that's a good deal. And then they've recently completed uh, governance roles and responsibilities for uh, board training. So they're excited to have some unknowns answered for them as far as running their organization. And then under smart reading, they are looking for volunteers to assist with the grades K through five. One of the friends is also a smart volunteer. And so she's encouraging the other members of the organization to um, assist with that program. And then uh, they also wanted to highlight the accomplishments. So for volunteer hours, the board of trust, or yes, excuse me, the board of directors have put in 130 hours and the chapters bookstore volunteers, um, almost a hundred hours. And then the non-board volunteers uh, is about 39 hours. And then the last piece they wanted to highlight is May at the museum. They're going to have two speakers in May, which will be Steve Lent and Gravy Dunbar. They are very busy. Okay. I sort of have one question. Sure. Um, the training that they got, the governance roles and responsibilities, mm -hmm. is that something that the, a library association puts on, or was this? something that they that they found on their own or? i'm i'm not sure um how they were guided to that particular session but we can chat and get back with you from board bright training mm -hmm. okay no i was just just curious that, that they made a lot of inroads to right and i i know that um if the organization joins the united for libraries they the board Board would have access oh, to trainings like that too. That might be working. So, yeah, cool. Okay, thanks, Lily. Oh, oh, you're welcome. welcome. And I feel like I should know, know this, but what is, like the friends raise money and do all these sales? Is the money, what is the money for? Is it for these events like hiring speakers or? So, I'll let Sean oh. take that one because he's the one that usually goes before them asking for funds. So, if the library doesn't need something, so one of the big things that they support is summer reading for teens and adults. So this year they donated $4,500. So all of summer reading is put on by them. If the library needs money for new subscriptions, we can go to the friends, ask them for whatever amount of donation, and they'll cover that. So really, if there's a big program or we want a special speaker, they can help fund that. So that's where a lot of the that's where most of the money goes. Okay. Are a lot of those reading programs sponsored by the state as well? So the only reading program that's sponsored by the state is summer reading for kids. It's called the Ready to Read program. Yeah. And that's for 14 and below. And half of the reading ready to read grant, half of it is for early development, and then half of it for summer reading. So that's why they support the teens and adults. Thank you. You're welcome. Leisure reports. Okay, so I just wanted to share with everyone that Words on Wheels just celebrated its first year of operation. And we do have several active um, patrons enrolled in the program, and uh, they are totally enjoying having materials brought to them. These are people that are physically unable to come into the building themselves. And so um, 
they've signed up for this program and we bring bags of books to them, um, authors that they've requested, uh, titles or anything like that. So it's, they're really appreciating it. And uh, the original WOW team, as we call ourselves, the WOW team uh, was Amber and Renee. And so between the three of us, we have been through the pilot program moving forward and we can't wait to see uh, as we start doing more outreach where that takes us. So um, I just wanted to say thank you to Sean because uh, the staff have been doing a great job pulling the fort. Sean and I have been expanding our leadership skills by attending all kinds of budget workshops, goal setting meetings, and participating in IT strategic planning. It has taken the two of us out of the building quite frequently. And so it's been really helpful that staff is so supportive and so knowledgeable in their own jobs that they can just kind of keep the ship going. And then for facilities, I just wanted to point out that the HVAC system upgrade is almost done. This is the last week they should be finished with it by Friday. Um, there is a little bit of, uh, they have to sync things up in the spring when the weather's warmer, because right now they can't do that, but they've got everything installed. They're making sure that all of that is um, connected properly and going to do the job. So this will be the first time that we've had actual heating and cooling that's functioning normal. So that's been good. And then maintenance also came by and installed a dimmer on the lighting at the front counter. When they first installed those rings, the LED rings, uh, the ones over the counter were too bright. And so they were able to install the dimmer to tone it down just a little so people could work at the front counter without getting a headache and when people stepping up to the counter weren't just overwhelmed because the granite was reflecting that LED. And, um, they also, maintenance had installed these roosting kind of like spikes to discourage our overnight visitors. <laughs> Those of you that use the after hours book drop, you may have noticed the, the nice round cover that the birds are providing. <laughs> and, yeah, so they've got the spikes up there trying to discourage the birds from roosting on those giant bolts that are holding the beans. And for the most part, it's working. I did notice that we had a friend there the other morning, but um, that's really when the weather warms up. Of course, they won't be roosting there, but during the winter time, it just makes that area really not pleasant to be around. And I just wanted to um, give everyone a hiring update. So maybe you've been contacted by HR. I gave them all your email addresses. Um, so that they could start setting up interviews. Uh, they're actually moving along with that, and hopefully we will have a new director soon. So I'm excited about that. And there was just one other, um, I think at the last meeting, Lakrita, you asked about where we stood with the um, oh, key yeah. cards. Yeah. And so maintenance right now has been being pulled here, there, and everywhere, especially the Justice Center. So they've kind of, it's on their to-do list. They just haven't exactly moved forward. So they, they know that the Justice Center is going to have those types of locks. And so once it's installed there, then they'll have a better idea of, of um, the other departments, because this is something that's going to happen to all of the county departments. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's where we stand with that one. And then we did um, just a kind of an update. Uh, we had maintenance wandering the broad room. We were talking about a few things that needed improvement. And um, it was pointed out that there was a hole in the floor in the broad oh, yeah. room. Oh, and yes. so when, I noticed that. when we looked at it, um, where that plug-in box, was in the flooring, it had come loose and dropped to the subfloor. So anybody that had lifted that, there was going to be this giant hole that went down to the subfloor. So maintenance came down, they got that fixed today. And so everything's like, we're all set now. <laughs>
And that was pretty much it. Um, did anyone have any questions about circulation? Oh, sort of. Okay. Um, you talked about words on wheels. Yes. Uh, question I may have asked this before and just plain forgot. Is there a distance requirement? How far you guys will go out to deliver? So during the pilot program, it was limited to um, within city limits because we weren't sure how the program was going to play out. And we only had um, two staff at that time committed to the program. Um, but once we went beyond the pilot program, we incorporated the entire county. So it's open to anyone up to River Canyon, okay. anyone out in Mackay. I mean, it's just if there's oh, someone in need. Mm -hmm. Good. And are you still working with uh, Meals on Wheels? No. Okay. Uh, that's a question. No distance requirements. So anybody that has a card can yeah. ask. Yes. If they meet the requirements. Mm -hmm. If they meet the requirements. <laughs> anybody else have any questions on circulation? I was uh, looking at the statistics and it appears that February's uh, activity was about a third of what it was two years ago. I wonder if there were any thoughts on that. I would need to go back through past spreadsheets um, to try and determine that. Um, I know that we've had, of course, it's a shorter month, so that may be part of it. But I know that um, with Deschutes doing all of its remodeling, it has impacted us to a certain extent as far as the paging list, the courier, and then um, checkouts themselves. So but I can get that information to you next month. Sure. Okay. Services. All right. So for public services, um, some of the big things that we're working on. So summer reading, um, the team heart is gearing up for summer reading. Uh, we're currently trying to recruit partnerships to enhance our programs and our, our regular programs and our summer reading specific programs, as well as outside partnerships. Um, promotion for summer reading will start around early May so we can um, test the schools before school gets out. Um, promotion for programming has been a work in progress. Uh, we're working on getting promotion out earlier. Um, we, we should have April's programs on the library's calendar within the next couple of days. So we're trying to get out a month in advance. Um, also, our Powell Butte Little Free Library, unfortunately, was damaged due to weather and old age. So we're currently getting that fixed up. That should be done hopefully in the next week. We found someone who will fix it for free for us, which is really nice. Um, for programming outreach, youth programming continues to grow outside of our regular monthly programs, which have been well attended. We started our uh, Pause of Pineville program, which is Read to the Dog. Um, that was very successful on the first one. So we have them now scheduled out for monthly, and then we're going to transition to weekly during the summer reading time. In addition, we hosted a stained glass window painting program for kids where they made stained glass artwork out of pasta. Uh, we're getting ready for the dino exhibit that will be starting in um, sorry, late April, early May. The dino exhibit is a very large exhibit, so we're sharing half the exhibit with the Bowman Museum. And we're storing a lot of the very delicate stuff at the museum just to help keep it safe. And then we'll be hosting, um, and the, one of the benefits of hosting at the Bowman Museum is that allowed us to schedule school visits because it's a little bit bigger area. So um, we're going to have some school visits come down and check out the dinosaur exhibit. IT program is going well with our uh, SIT program, which is Snacks in the Stacks. Uh, February was a very busy outreach month for our team librarian, Katie. During the month of February, Katie visited the Crick County Middle School and participated in the Middle School Health Fair, and they hosted a book facing with one of the English teachers. She was able to connect with 800 students at the health fair and 225 students at the book tasting. The book tasting was a huge success, and they have another one planned for this month. In March, Katie will be hosting her regular monthly programs um, and outreach, and she has added a special program. She's going to be hosting a murder mystery party at the library, so she's got some kits for the kids to kind of figure out. 
And then adult programming saw an increase in attendance in February. Um, we offered a variety of different programs. But one of the programs we, we saw was the music in public places. The library hosted the 27th Brass Quintet, which saw about 70 attendees come. So we know the music in public places is very popular. It's well attended. And so we have them scheduled for April, and then we're looking to schedule them throughout the summertime. Um, way to get some classical music. Um, they play a whole bunch of different different types of music, so um, it's kind of nice to bring that into the library. Any questions? Yeah, but six. Six is it previously was uh, King Tuesday, okay. and because of all those conflicts outside of the library, we moved it to Wednesday, and <laughs> they had to change the name. So it's basically a time for the kids, uh, the teens, to come into the library, browse books, connect with the teen librarian, um, explore resources, eat popcorn, and really just hang out at the library. Um, I know last week's um, Snacks in the Stacks, we had 16 teens in the teen room, which is a lot for teens in the library, so which is really nice. I know this one we had seven show up, so um, it's starting to get more and more popular. And I think a lot of the kids just they just like hanging out in there. Anybody have any questions? I have a comment question about an earlier question uh, regarding the circulation statistics and the way they're reported. Mm -hmm. So we were just talking about like these are single day numbers, but it looks like that um, February 2021 there were 280 checkouts, whereas February 2022 there were 197. But those are single day mm -hmm. checkouts. Yeah, those are the high lows. I I misread it. So thank you, Nadia. Yeah, and I honestly don't really understand all these numbers. I mean, it's really interesting, actually. I'm, like making notes of like which day should I come to the library, but I'm like that high day. I think that's when I came to the library. I probably checked out like 15 books. So <laughs> sorry for that. Um, but what's the like items listed? So let me get back to my spreadsheet. Sorry, I just kind of put myself off over here. Okay, so the paging list. Um, those are the items that show up that we run this list each morning. Um, there, we pull them to fulfill hold, whether it's on site or if they're leaving the building. Um, that one has definitely seen an increase just because of the closures of the shoots. So if something is held but not yet checked out, it hits that list. So the, the paging list, those are, the paging list are items that are leaving the building. So. It's a list that's generated. Well, specifically the statistic, 266 items listed. Is that what it's? Yes, so 266 items showed up on the list on um, that day, on 221. So normally it's not that high. So that was the high for February. So the low, we only had 80 items on the list, but that was February 11. Saturday, interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it just depends on when people put items on hold. And especially since they can put them on hold online, and they can, depends on who, who does it. Usually Monday is a huge yeah. list. I wanted to just further add that the uh, checkouts in February did increase from 2022 for my review of my papers. Okay, so that's yeah. exciting. Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, we don't have financial st st statistics to review. No. So we need to. I, I do have a question about financial statistics so posted for the public. Yes. And where, when, and where do they get posted? I have a date. So normally the finance department posts makes the financial ledger um, official right around the 10th of each month. 
so because the board meeting falls on the second Thursday, we usually have our meeting before they're finalized. And once they're finalized, we include them in our board packets sent out to the trustees. Um, I don't know if, I think the finance department posts them on the county site, but I would have to look at that to verify. But anytime anyone uh, would like to see those numbers, we can give you a copy. Haven't you been emailing them out to people, to the board? After you get them, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. So as soon as we get them, we send them back out. Okay, yeah, I thought it. Uh -huh. It's usually at this point. It's after the fact. Yeah, yeah. After a meeting. Um, statistics. I have, I have a comment about statistics. Yes. Um, the electronic use. The ancestry thing that people can do, like ancestry.com, that mm -hmm. has to be done in the library in yeah. order for it to be true. Yes. And Heritage Quest, which is the same basic thing as ancestry.com, mm -hmm. and it's free, and you can use it from home. Correct. So maybe we ought to start promoting. I mean, a lot of people would be interested in doing some genealogy research mm -hmm. from home for free uh, but maybe they just don't know about it there were only 38 uses since i don't know when yeah we definitely can start promoting that um i know amber has talked about hosting a genealogy workshop um we did recently get in contact with someone who is interested in hosting kind of a, how to get started genealogy workshop so um so yeah, that's a perfect opportunity and we can definitely promote that. That's the bummer part about Ancestry is it's good, but you have to be in the library. Yeah. Um, which is a bummer during uh, COVID, they let it, libraries release it out so you can use it at home. They just brought that back for, so, but Heritage Quest, I personally think Heritage Quest is a little better than Ancestry because it has a lot more primary sources. So, so yeah, we can definitely promote that. So when people were stuck at home January, February, and December, they could have been doing their online genealogy search instead of you know, tripping into the library to use an interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people should know. Okay, definitely. Uh, okay. Next question: What is the total category? It can't be year. Well, it can't be year to date. It can't be yearly because it's lower than the last reported year. The quarter. The total. Yeah. That is for the year, um, but I think it's for us, it might exceed um, our fiscal year. Which so fiscal what, year today? Mm -hmm. What category are you looking at? The total, just the first, any, the first category. Totally column. So. Okay. So, yeah, if you're not seeing on the handout, you're not seeing um, the columns before December. And that's where you would get those other numbers. Okay. From, which is probably fiscal year to date from July. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. July 1 is the start of that. Correct. Yep. Thanks. Anybody else? Questions, comments? have no continuing business on the agenda. Correct? Correct. There's nothing? I no? yeah. All right. We're now at item seven, which is new business. The only thing on there are comments from the board. I will be making just in a moment. <laughs> no, it's just in this. Okay. These are my comments under. I can't hear you. <laughs> You're too soft spoken. Under new business. 
Imagine my shock. The first line was, and I quote, when Cheyenne Edgerly learned about books reflective of LGBTQ experience in the children's section of her local library, she sprang into action. There was a battle taken up and that battle was lost, Edgerly said this month. I was very surprised. Okay, here are my comments in response to that article as the chair of the Kirk County Library Board of Trustees. First, a narrative. At the end of March, 2022, Cheyenne began raising concerns with the library director, April Witt even, Whittaben, about why the library wasn't balancing the woke titles with titles that appeal to the Christian conservative family values of the county specifically those with LGBTQ content and puberty slash human development. On April 9th, Cheyenne wished to have a meeting to discuss how and why those books were purchased with April and Jennifer, the children's library. On April 25th, Cheyenne checked out 20 to 25 children's books listed as LGBTQ in the catalog and again confronted April about the content of these books. The meeting she requested was set for May 6th. On April 27th, Cheyenne met with one or more of the county commissioners about these books. The May 6th meeting, meeting Cheyenne requested was arranged specifically to meet her busy schedule. She advised that some of her friends would be coming with her. On May 6th, the meeting was attended by Cheyenne, Amy Fitzgerald, Laura Lane, April, the library director, Jennifer Fisher, the children's librarian, and Crook County Library Board of Trustee members, Sue Ann Neal, Jerry Bishop, and myself. Cheyenne arrived late. She introduced herself as a Christian conservative Catholic mother of six. She proceeded to declare that several of the books in the children's section were downright pornographic, were geared to grooming, and her eight-year-old had written a graphic novel with a gay transgender character. Her three-year-old had got, got gay books with unicorns and rainbows and two gay moms that talked about climate change. There was also a discussion of her displeasure with the children from Science Color Elementary School being allowed to check out books without their parents. Cheyenne then proceeded to interrogate the, interrogate the children's librarian about where she was from. Why did she choose these books? Who had asked for these books? How could someone not from here and not a mother understand the wants of Crook County families and our values? The process for selecting children's books was explained in depth several times by both Jennifer and April. Cheyenne was given an application for a trustee position and was told that there would be three open positions on the board of trustees to be filled July 1st due to term limits and resignations. Cheyenne said she would be attending the May 12th board of trustees meeting and would be bringing her supporters. I later learned that Cheyenne had been telling her Bible study group that April and maybe Jennifer were gay and had used the COVID closure of the library to pursue the purchase of LGBTQ books for the children's section. I also learned that Cheyenne was agitating in a local Facebook group to attend the May 12th trustees meeting. On May 10th, Cheyenne wrote a letter to the editor of the Central Oregonian about the school 
school district, which she said had been forcing graphic sexual and gender content onto the students. Jack Ravenberg also had a letter to the editor that same issue and noted that the county library was allowing children to view trash. They both encouraged a no vote on the school bond measure. On May 12th, the Board of Trustees meeting was attended by more persons than could fit in the room. A lot of comments were made by the public in attendance in support of the library, and a lot of misinformation was pushed forward by Cheyenne's supporters. Jack Ravenberg was especially vocal and disrespectful and was gaveled down. The people in the lobby were argumentative, belligerent, and rude to library staff. On May 13th, Superintendent, jo the day after the meeting on May 13th, Superintendent Johnson emailed the library that Steins Pillar Elementary School would be barred from any further attendance at the library. On May 17th, a Ben Bulletin article highlighted the controversy by lumping the trouble at the school district and the Crook County Library as, uh, as being coming from the same direction. On June 9th, Board of Trustees meeting, Cheyenne was selected to be appointed as one of the new Board of Trustee members, as were Natalie Conley, Natalie Good. It was the cons consensus of the Board of Trustee members that Cheyenne was a many years patron of the library had brought her children to the library on a weekly basis, and that once Cheyenne became familiar with the rules governing libraries and the hows and the whys of how libraries are intended to be run, she could be a contributing member to the board. Cheyenne did not attend her first meeting on July 14th due to a family birthday. At the next meeting, August 11th, Cheyenne's first time in appearance, Natalie Conway, the new assistant principal of Crooked River Elementary School, made a comment during the public service report that the library car drive at Crooked River Elementary was a great success last year. On August 16th, Jack Ravenberg announced on a local Facebook page there would be a public meeting to discuss human sexual sexuality education and how to protect students from inappropriate content in our schools. The public was not open to the meeting, was not open to the general public, but was only for like-minded people to attend. The meeting was held at the Prime Hill Funeral Home in the Cheyenne's Places of Business. On August 17th, the next day, Natalie Conway was called to a meeting with the Crooked River Elementary Principal, the super Superintendent of Schools Johnson, and seven parents. They were not in favor of their children going to the library and in the library cards, as Natalie had supported at the August 11th trustees meeting. Natalie Conway was forced to choose between her job and being on the board of trustees. On August 18th, the next day, Natalie Conway submitted her resignation by email to the library director and to me. The August meeting had been Natalie's second meeting and was Cheyenne's first one. On September 8th, the Board of Trustees at that meeting, the members accepted Natalie's resignation and discussed choosing another member from the pool of previous applicants that said they would still like to be considered. Cheyenne immediately questioned that process for filling the vacancy. She said she knew of a person or two who would be good candidates, and she wanted the application process to be reopened. At some point, she brought up this library board vacancy filling process to Judge Crawford. This led <clears throat> the court requiring that all departments, committees, and commissions come up with specific applications for any vacancies that were to be approved by the court. The process for opening, closing dates, advertising would be conducted by the court. Each department, committee, and board was directed to produce a specific application form for their entity that would be approved by the county. The library was to begin work on this for approval at the October meeting. The county arranged for a countywide active threat survey training and training by the Bend Police Department. On September 16th, the library had that training and due to recent tension and behavior by some, the management team asked for an additional walkthrough and recommendations that would 
help to keep ensure staff safety. <clears throat> Those recommended recommendations included key card locks for the staff offices and film for the inside office windows so staff could not be observed while doing their jobs. It is my understanding that the cost will not come out of the library budget, but will pay by the county and that these safety upgrades and work for installation is currently out for bid. At the October 12th trustee meeting, both Sandy Curbo and Michael Custer, who had checked out a bag full of LGBTQ children's books with her new library card, both raised questions as to why these particular books were ordered for the library. They were again referred to the collection development policy and advised of the request for consideration form that could be submitted just as they had been told at each meeting of the Cook County Library Board of Trustees since May. Uh, I have a question. Are you allowed, are you allowed to get out of order. Information out of order. For other people? Are you allowed to do that? Because we just quoted public people that checked out library books. Is that breaking library board policy? Sure. Are you allowed to tell what other people checked out? Just finish. Thank you. <laughs> And the matter was first brought up. Okay. At that meeting, the trustees were asked to adopt the court's new ordinance regarding future vacancies <laughs> on county boards and commissions and to consider what questions they would like to have on future applications for trustee positions. April compiled a list of questions that are used by other libraries. They were emailed to the trustees as a spreadsheet and we would choose those we thought were appropriate for our library. And to add any that we wish to include. We were to vote on them at our November 10th meeting, at which time they would be sent to the court for their adoption. On October 13th at 10.01 a.m., Cheyenne sent an email to April, the trustees, Judge Crawford and Jerry Brummer, asking who had come up with these questions, three question marks. Quote, I am very concerned that these questions on inclusion I feel like this is discriminatory against Catholics, Muslims, Jewish people, and all non-denominational Christians. Still quoting. Is this considered a question as to rule out people if they disagree with the LGBTQ slash transgender agenda? Still quoting. This seems like a bully tactic to me. Can you please clarify? April replied, that the inclusion questions came from other libraries in Baker City and Newburgh. At 1024, Cheyenne sent another email to those same recipients. It was a link to an article from the New York Post dot librarians dash go dash radical at new woke policies take over experts. At 1052 a.m., Cheyenne sent another email to the same recipients. She stated, I quote, I feel the inclusion question does not represent the majority of Cook County citizens. Still quoting, it was brought up to my attention that several of the people who showed up in support of the LGBTQ agenda at the May meeting were not from Cook County, but were brought in as an all call from Redmond, Madras, and Ben. So for them to give input to Cook County Library was invalid. Still quoting. We clarified that at last night's meeting that nobody in Crook County requested LGBTQ and transgender books, but they were brought in by yourself, meaning April, and the children's librarian who felt Crook County was underrepresented in this area, but neither of you live in Crook County. Still quoting. From what I have been reading, it looks like this is a national issue that is now taking place in Kirk County without any of the citizens consent. Still quoting, now we have several families who will not go to the library out of fear for their children being exposed to pornography and age inappropriate material. Still quoting, I personally have not taken my children back to the library because I am not comfortable with my young children seeing pictures of low jobs and sexual acts, including showing them how to masturbate. Still, as a parent, library board member, as a member of the community who pays taxes, I believe this needs to be further addressed. She, end quote. she requested this matter be put on the next board agenda to let people participate in the discussion. 
Apparently, the only response that Cheyenne received was the one from myself on October 14th at 3.56 p.m. <clears throat> I replied to her that her three emails of October 13th were not helpful to the overall mission of the library. I suggested that her responsibility as a parent and a trustee might be to accompany them to the library and help them choose what she would like them to be exposed to. I also advise Cheyenne, and I'm quoting, the attempt to point fingers and or place blame on the library director, the children's librarian, or the team librarian from doing their jobs would go no further. The library already has policies and procedures in place for county taxpayers to re request reconsideration of an pre <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting dry. A procedure in place for the county taxpayers to request reconsideration of books that are here, and the library board will not get turned into the circus that is currently currently taking place at the school district. Sorry, I need a sip of water. There would be no mass meeting to allow her supporters to rant at the staff and other board members. I also asked her to consider her position as a board member. Did she have a personal agenda or goal different from the goals and mission of the library? I advised her that bad enough in the library staff and, and excuse me, and fellow board members out in the community was not helpful and could be considered a violation of the library board of trustees code of ethics. She did not reply to my email. After this, someone, and I assume it was Cheyenne, reached out to Judge Crawford regarding the First Amendment rights. This caused Judge Crawford to hire at county expense a constitutional rights attorney named Aaron Landau from the Valley. Um, this was a, a special, he called a special executive, a special meeting to hold an executive session on November 4th. And it was held by Zoom, also by Zoom with Leonard, or not Leonard, Aaron Landa from the Valley. Uh, this meeting was attended by Judge Crawford, Commissioner Brunner, Commissioner Barney, Library Director April Whitman, and County Council Eric Lane. It was later learned that the Oregon State Library has attorneys specifically to answer constitutional rights questions that would have been free of charge because Crook County Library functions under their auspices. Judge Crawford requested that the decision on shelving or laboring, labeling LGBTQ books as an option to current policy be presented at the November 10th meeting of the trustees and that he would be there and attorney Landau would be present on Zoom to answer questions. At the November 10th trustee meeting, after discussion of those options with the attorney, the library director was directed to investigate and report on what options that could be available and any implications that could result from separate shelving or labeling LGBTQ books. On November 21st, I received an email from April, which was also addressed to Judge Crawford and County Counsel Eric Blaine. In that email, April set out the ramifications <clears throat> that would result from separate shelving of materials containing LBGTQ themes. One, the termination of the Crook County Library as a member of the Tri-County Library Resource Contract. Two, state library investigation of public library minimum standards and the potential to lose state standing as a recognized public library. And three, potential for litigation based on discriminatory discriminatory practices. Basically, we would be a standalone library without access to state funding and grant money, book sharing, no internet, nor ebooks. I shared this email with the rest of the trustees and expressed my concern that we would lose our library. Cheyenne's response was, and I quote, we are Crook County, not Deschutes County. Our county can stand on its own. Is this a smoke screen with four question marks? In the book, Cheyenne showed total disregard for maintaining the Crook County Public Library, but still intended to promote her own agenda for the library. 
On December 8, 2022, the trustees meeting was held in the Broughton Room to allow for public comment on what was to be called Proposal 1, creating a juvenile LGBTQ special collection, and Proposal Number 2, juvenile LGBTQ items remain interfiled. After much testimony from the State Library, the Tri-County Library Professionals, and members of the public, a vote was finally held. The result was to keep the library as it was. The vote by the board was four to one, with Cheyenne being the lone no vote. It appeared that Cheyenne would rather lose our public library and the many and varied services we can provide to the community that then to have her desire to discriminate the part of our community be thwarted. When Cheyenne took her oath of office, she became a public official and she accepted the duties and responsibilities I will now describe. Trusted job description, advocate for the library with the governing body and the general public, promote library services within the community, represent a wide segment of the community as a representative in public forums, and understand the library ethics and principles, the library bylaws, the duty to promote library services in the community as a public official, the Association for Library Trustees Ethics, using United for Libraries definition, inclusive, inclusivity, include as many age-appropriate perspectives on the diversity of the human experience, Neutrality, to remain ideologically neutral, to ensure all patrons have access to any information they please. Not offering any opinion or perspective so all community members feel safe. Extra legal pressure, stand against threats by community members or organized groups to result in banning, removing, or restricting access to library materials without following library policies or procedures. Parental rights. No parent has the right to affect access of other children to library services. Based on that information I have presented, I right now, I charge Cheyenne Edgerly with accepting the position of the, to the Board of Trustees under false pretenses, with the purpose being to promote her own personal agenda and beliefs, is causing unrest within the community focused on the library policies and the library director, which resulted in rude and threatening behavior toward the library employees and resulting in costly measures to keep them safe in their jobs. This causing the forced resignation of Natalie Conway, a duly appointed member from doing her civic duties, with making slanderous comments about and causing the untimely resignation of the library director, April Whitteden, which put unnecessary burden on the overall operations of the library until a successor to that position can be found. With devious and underhanded attempts in the community to undermine the library stock staff and her fellow trustees, Cheyenne used her position on the board of trustees to promote her personal agenda, stir up hate and discontent within the community and not for the benefit of the library, its patrons, nor the citizenry of the county in general. In Cheyenne's interview with OPB on February 24th regarding the Kirk County Library, she stated, and I quote, there was a battle taken up and that battle was lost, end quote. I say, yes, yes, Cheyenne, I hereby request, that, or the battle is lost and I hereby request Cheyenne Edgerly submit her resignation from the Kirk County Library Board of Trustees to the County Court prior to the April 13th, 2023 trustee meeting. If her resignation has not been submitted by that date, I will then ask for a vote of the trustees to re recommend to the County Court that Cheyenne Edgerly be officially removed and that her membership be terminated. A copy of these comments will be forwarded to, be forwarded to County Council Eric Blaine for his consideration. I'm not done. My disclaimer, the comments and conclusions that I have made here are my own, based on my own documentation of events, information provided to me by others and emails that I have received, copies of which can be made available as requested. 
I would also note that in my reference to the county code special meeting executive session that was held on Friday, November 4th, 2022, I was only made aware of the outcome of that meeting. I was told by the library director that George, Judge Crawford and Aaron Landau have requested to be added to the November 10th trustee meeting agenda to answer questions. I state this to avoid being interviewed by the sheriff again when the former library director was falsely suspected of violating the confidentiality requirements of executive sessions when dealing with personnel matters. Next item on, on the agenda is new business. If anyone present has anything they want to put on the next month's agenda, please email, <coughs> email either Cindy or Sean and they will put it on the agenda. Uh, I would now call, we're on item number eight, which is oop, number nine, which I now call for adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? No comments. Motion to adjourn. No, the no, I just we have a second to correct the record. I, I'm Sandy Turbo. I renewed my library card and I checked out an audio book by Colleen Coble, which is a culture comment. So we did an audio. All right, well, the next item on the agenda is yeah. adjournment. Okay, we had a motion by. Deborah, second by Natalie to adjourn. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Let me stop